for coming. So first time we do this, so pretty exciting. Hopefully a lot of things won't go wrong, as they usually do. <laughs> but my name is Luis Mahano. I'm a computer engineer. And uh, that's my home country, El Salvador, land of volcanoes, and a lot of gang members lately. <laughs> but uh, CEO of Ortiz, all the things box here, and very excited to kind of be here for you, for you guys and give you a great day, hopefully. So first of all, uh, thank you for the sponsors, everybody that kind of believed in us to make this happen for the first time. You can see all of them there. So just thank them um, for all the, the things and the support they gave us for this day. So pretty exciting. And also all the speakers that are here. So maybe you guys can stand up, all the speakers that are here. and Switzerland, so from all over the world, so thank you guys for, for making this happen. And of course the organizers as well, so where's the doc? There's the doc. So Tim, thanks for pulling us together and giving us all your expertise, so thank you for everybody for, for making this happen. But I think it was important to know why we did this. So we really wanted to, to do a cold fusion conference because we really, really love Confusion and we know how great it is and we really wanted to present to you a lot of topics that are important to us. But not only about Confusion, because of, you know, Confusion is a great amalgamation of technologies, so we wanted to present on things other than Confusion and surrounding the stack, like Java integration, mobile stuff, Caltrace, NoSQL, Node.js, enterprise messaging with RabbitMQ and maybe even other languages like Ruby. So that's the main reason, is to, to have a developer technology conference. So we have 14 great sessions for you guys from security, see Pete over there, our security master there, uh, NoSQL from profiling and server tuning, to architecture, RESTful services, dependency injection, CMS, modules, themes, mobile, ORM, and testing. So a lot of topics during the day for you guys to choose from, so pretty, pretty exciting. We have our mobile app, so I don't know if you guys have downloaded it already, but in your pamphlet on the back, there's the QR codes. You can see the session schedule, all the news that we're having, the speaker and the sponsor highlights, but most important, we're doing all our surveys through the mobile app, so that you won't get any survey paper or anything like that. So we have the main conference survey as well there, and you have the session survey. So only if you like us, then use it. If you don't like us, don't use it. <laughs> but it's really a testament of all the tools. It's actually built on ContentBox and Coldbox, and Sencha Touch, and of course Adobe Phone Guy. So um, if you guys want to know more about the app, you can talk to Joel over there. He's the lead on the mobile app. So pretty excited to actually use all our technologies to, to power the mobile app. We also have a little smart badge. So this Kev, did Kev make it? Where's Kev? There you go. We gotta honor Kev because he was the last, the last entry. So there you go, Kev. There's your honor. <laughs> so um, on the top right, you can scan if somebody allows you to, and that will add you to the contacts. So if you don't want anybody to scan you, just hold it like that. <laughs> so Kev, you get a gold star. Thank you. <laughs> and then of course, at the end of the day, we're gonna have a happy box. So it will be in this room, we'll join the two rooms again. Uh, around 6.30 we're going to do a bunch of raffles right here and then uh, at the back we're going to have uh, uh, some food and a party so please stick around and then you can go to the other party <laughs> in the Radisson Blue. But let me tell you a little bit about what we're doing and where we're headed with all our, our products. Uh, I don't know if you know this but Ortus we do a lot of web development of course, support and mentoring for our products, architecture and design, all the server tuning and infrastructure, and of course, training for us. We have uh, a lot of products now, so it's not only Coldbox and ContentBox. Well, actually, before it was just Coldbox. But now we have ContentBox, but we have a lot of our dependent, independent frameworks, like Wirebox and TestBox, of course, for testing and BDD. But we also have ProfileBox which uh, integrates very nicely with Integral for Fusion Reactor to help you tune and, and profile your applications. We have FuseGuard. Um, we collaborated with Pete, so we have a very awesome software firewall, not only for Coldbox, but for ContentBox. Databox for ORM scaffolding. 
and Couchbase. So we have actually two uh, big projects for integrating with NoSQL for ColdFusion. So we have a CF Couchbase, which is the free open source SDK, so you can integrate with NoSQL very, very easily. But the main focus right now, we're going to talk a little bit about the future of Coldbox and ContentBox. So Coldbox is old now. It's actually going to be eight years old this June. So believe it or not, it's, it's eight years. Yay. <laughs> it has been a very mature project, uh, over 20,000 downloads a year. We've had 27 official releases and about 15 beta and alpha releases. So very, very active still. A lot of very established and growing communities still. Very incredible. Used by thousands of companies worldwide. And we're growing the ecosystem. And it's, it's been a very successful project. So for Coldbox 4, let's see who knows what that formula is. Mm. We want it to be greater than average. <laughs> for those nerds there. But we really wanted to improve a lot of areas. And one of the areas that we really wanted to improve is modularity. We introduced uh, Coldbox modules about maybe four years ago, and it's one of the best things that we added. And for Coldbox 4, basically our Coldbox Lite or MVC became, has become our new core. Everything else has been taken out and become a module. Uh, we've also added the capability to do modules of modules, or what Brad calls module inception. Uh, we have the capability for modules to talk to the CF engine to register mappings now, Coldbox 4, and actually do interdependencies. So you can actually say this module depends on these other modules. Uh, test box integration for BDD. A lot of automation we've added. Uh, building the ecosystem. And today you can see one of the coolest, coolest tools we've been working on for quite a while. What was incredible is that now the source code has been reduced by 75%. <laughs> Pretty awesome. So we've reduced uh, an entire source code by that, and everything has moved now to modules. So it's incredibly, incredibly lightweight, and it's easier for us to maintain now because the core is so small. And then the modules are also easier to maintain because you don't have to wait for a full, you know, kind of cold box framework release to, you know, update, let's say, the ORM or update um, the IOC container. So is proven to be really, really good for us. But I think we have a lot more to talk about, so maybe I'll bring up our evangelist, Brad Wood, to give you a little bit of our roadmap and a little demo. I don't have to give you Thank you. I'm going to switch towards before I work. <laughs> oh, you guys, are you plugging it in? <laughs> how y'all doing? Good. I don't think you heard me. I said, how you all doing? Good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> excited about, um, about Coldbox 4 and everything uh, that we're doing with it and uh, how much lighter and smaller and uh, faster it's going to be. So uh, there's a Coldbox 4 roadmap. Uh, we've got it out in the Coldbox blog if you haven't seen it. There's a you know, PDF document that kind of talks a bit more you know, in length of some of the stuff I'm going to be showing today. And you can, uh, you can go to the Coldbox blog. If you search uh, roadmap in the search box at the top result, we did it last night to find uh, this image is on there. Um, so uh, this is, these are kind of some rough timelines. We had the uh, we have some dates on the actual roadmap, but we blacked them out. We didn't want to get pinned down to any particular date. Um, so uh, kind of you know some progressive steps that we're sort of hoping to uh, you know to release with this. And so um, you know we're reworking a lot of the internal processes as far as how we build it. Uh, you know we've always had unit tests, so you know huge collection of unit tests and everything that Lisa's maintained back from the the long ago days of Coldbox, and so you know we're working on getting it all set up with our you know integration server and automatically running those things, um, you know, and automatic builds, so we can always confirm that you know what we have on the on the bleeding edge, what we write works, and that we don't break stuff, um, you know, to help with uh, preventing uh, regressions. And so you know the core of Coldbox, uh, like Luis said, you know the core code is down to seventy five percent smaller. So we didn't you know throw away seventy five percent of the code. Um, we, re we removed the giant. Copyright header at the top. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> throw that. We're, we're no longer Apache 2 license. We wrote our own license. No. Um, so, you know, where did all the code go, right? Then we got tons of deprecations. So, you know, what we're doing basically is, you know, instead of having, you know, kind of a really large framework, you know, Coldbox has always been, in my opinion, one of the most you know, useful and productive 
Cold Fusion Frameworks because it comes with all this stuff. It's, you know, it's conventions and it's also tooling. It's libraries, it's utilities, it's logging. It's all the stuff that you're going to need to build an application. Even if it's a small application, you're going to want to manage dependencies. You're going to want to cache things. And you know, cobbling together a bunch of little tiny libraries can be kind of like you know, building your own Linux distribution with you know, just random stuff from everywhere. But I mean, you don't do that, right? You you know, have kind of one repository of everything you know works together. And that's always been Coldbox, but really wanted to work on getting it you know, lightweight and modular. You know, so modules have been a, a super huge focus since we brought them out in Coldbox three. And so finally, you know, we said, what? Well, why can't Coldbox do this itself and become more modular in its own? So. We've been, Luis has been going gangbusters on, on GitHub. We've, you know, we're breaking out all the, the internal pieces of stuff inside Coldbox that aren't the actual you know, core. Basically, think of Coldbox Lite, um, you know, which it came out with a year or so ago, which is sort of just MVC conventions. It's model, it's views, controller, and it's some of the, you know, the AOP pre-handler, post-handler, just, you know, the basic stuff. That's basically going to be what the core of Coldbox is, and all the things around it that it does, like uh, you know, the debugging module and logging, and you know, the ORM services, internationalization, all the you know stuff, all the plugins, anti sambies Think of the Coldbox system plugins directory in your head. All that stuff isn't really part of the core MVC. It's just tooling that goes along with Coldbox. So all that stuff is getting pushed into separate modules that'll be on GitHub as their own separate repositories. And you'll have the ability, if you want to have a super lightweight version of Coldbox and you don't use anti sammy and you don't want the stupid three megabyte jar that's in there in your application, you can just remove the module. It's all in one folder. And if you're not familiar with Coldbox modules, we have a session um, on that today. But I mean, basically, think of it as a, almost like a jar in Java. You've got you know, a single, uh, you know, single package, a folder of code, all you know, zipped up. It's kind of self-standalone, and it can contribute anything it wants to the Coldbox application. So it's perfect for breaking apart the pieces of the application we want to work with. And one of the things that um, we're going to be doing with modules, which is I think is kind of cool, is uh, you know, modules right now are a folder. We're actually going to let you zip them up um, and have uh, just uh, you know, an actual like, single file like you kind of have with a jar. So um, you know, deprecations and things. Um, most everything that's being deprecated will still be there. It just might not be part of the, the core Coldbox framework. And so we're excited about that. We're also uh, going to be dropping ColdFusion 8 support. Um, ColdFusion 9 came out in 2009. So, I mean, it's like seven years ago. Um, we know there's a lot of people sometimes that, you know, stay behind in older versions, but we need to, you know, we need to move with the times and keep up with the new developments that are, you know, that Adobe's putting in ColdFusion so we can, you know, Stay on the leading edge, so everything will be Cold Fusion nine and forward, and so we're going to be working on you know converting everything internally to script. Which I don't know, I kind of geek out about that. I like uh, I like having all you know business logic and stuff that's not you know presentation to be uh, nice and cool in the script. Uh, but anyway, so I mean, lots of uh, you know uh, features you can read about on there as far as you know redesigning the error templates, or you know adding more features to try to make Coldbox secure by default. Which you know we heard Alicia talk about a lot of the Adobe things. You know, uh, last night they, she presented to the local user group here about you know when you install it, is it secure? You know, potentially out of the box. It's not you know you install it and you have to do a bunch of things to make it secure. So you know, some of the things we kind of added in recently is you know if you uh, if you don't specify if you're good to put a reinit password in your you know config file, then you know only you reinit to you actually specify one. And we we want you to specifically say yeah anyone can reinit this, not just assume. Well, you didn't put the set it in, so we're letting anybody reinit it. You know, so we're adding in settings like that, trying to make things secure. Um, we're going to have a default, you know, error template that's for public consumption. It's not the "please hack my server" error template that you probably ran across if you hit a cold box site and they don't, you know, trap their errors good. So, you know, things that are secure. We have you know more asynchronous features we want to add. Um, layout inheritance is some stuff from a uh, uh, kind of Django, isn't it? That we borrowed some of that stuff from uh, that we think looks really cool. Uh, modules enhancements, um, Luis mentioned the mappings, those are really cool, and that's one of the things we ran into trying to modularize parts of, um, of Coldbox. If you know, uh, let's say if you look at one of our you know, box frameworks like Logbox, we have CFCs that extend another CFC, so you know, extends equals logbox.system. something like that, right? You can't just do that with a folder of code that can be anywhere relative to the web root in ColdFusion unless you create a mapping for it. And so one of the things in Coldbox 4, like Luis had mentioned earlier, will be the ability for a module to automatically register a cold fusion mapping, like the app specific mappings you put in your application.cfc, but it'll all be dynamic on the fly at runtime. So in your module config, this.cf mapping equals 
and if your module is called foobar, you have to create a, a CF mapping called foobar. And then internally, you can have, you know, that'll be the root of your module. So you can have CFC, the reference foobar dot something, and the reference in themselves. And so that was a, a really big key in being able to, you know, completely modularize anything into a folder and to be able to be self-referencing. So um, we're really looking forward to a lot of people kind of embracing modules and, uh, and, and packaging, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Um, let's see here. Forgebox. Um, we're going to be doing a rewrite of Forgebox this year. It's been out there for a while. Um, if you go to coldbox.org and click on Forgebox, and it's sort of our uh, our Coldbox, um, you know, code repository depot. You can anybody can sign up for free, and you can you know submit uh, projects and things. And right now, it's kind of kind of been sort of a, a Coldbox ecosystem thing. You know, you can put modules, you can put interceptors, plugins, uh, layouts, and widgets and things for content box all are, are all on there. And we wanted to kind of expand the focus of Forgebox. We're going to do a kind of a 2.0 version and rewrite it. And we wanted to become more of a, a general purpose um, uh, for just a CFML community in general, I guess. We want anybody to put, you know, libraries and things that might even not be specific to the Coldbox to sort of broaden the scope. And we wanted to also um, kind of uh, bring it up to be more of a package manager, right? So um, let's see here. Uh, I, I talked about that a second ago, um, the module.box. So, you know, our kind of, you know, solution for, for you know, packaged code are, are modules because we're like, you know, a plugin or something, you have a single file, but, you know, a module is an entire directory and you can have entire pieces of an application in there. So, you know, interceptors that automatically register themselves, you know, model objects that will be automatically mapped for you that you can use. And so, um, you know, one of the things we'll be letting you do is basically zip up the module folder itself and give it a, a .box extension, which I mean, it's kind of like, you know, a little expandable distributable modules, like I said, for like a jar file, you know, in Java, but it'll be kind of the equivalent for Cold Fusion. And so with, uh, with kind of, you know, the focus on modules as, you know, the modular way to package a chunk of code that anybody can drop in, um, our enhancements to Forgebox to kind of, you know, promote it up to a full package manager we're going to start introducing some stuff. We've looked a lot at NPM, which is the Node Package Manager, um, and how they've done things because they they're you know wildly successful. And so um, we're going to start having a, a box.json um, uh, pattern or convention where you know you'll have this box.json file that you can put in the root of your of your packages that you put in Forgebox, and sort of some metadata that describes you know what this package is. And so you can have you know, versions of it. You know, direct the installation directory needs to be installed on. Um, you know, other dependencies. We want to start having packages that are dependent. So, you know, in Linux, if you go and you install, you know, SSH or something, it's like, oh, well, you need this, you know, RPM, you need this RPM. It goes and it gets them and installs them as well, right? That's the direction we want to move. So, you can, you know, say, I want to install this module into my content box site. Okay, well, it's dependent on this module and this plugin. And it goes and it gets them because, you know, they have self describing uh, JSON built into them to kind of uh, map the dependencies. And of course, you know, other information like, you know, tight and test box, you can have information on, you know, where the tests are, and you know, maybe it's an entire application or some module with unit test. And so this is all going to be coming as part of, uh, as part of Forgebox in the next version to, uh, you know, not just have, you know, a repository with some code that you put out there, but it actually is more of a package that has definition and has meaning um, that we can build around. So, um, Along and built into what we're doing with Forgebox is our brand new project that we have codenamed Gideon. So Gideon is Command Box, and the new the new uh, slogan is Go Commando. <laughs> do, do not raise your hand if you're going Commando today. So Command Box is going to be a, kind of a combination CLI uh, command line interface. A package manager, also going to have some REPL stuff. Did you say REPL or did you spell it out R-E-P-L? I, I never know. Uh, it actually stands for read about print loop. You see similar stuff in languages like Ruby, um, you know, in JavaScript. You can go in a command line, you can, you know, write code and, you know, have it interpreted right there. Um, so this is what Command Box is. So Command Box is a project we've been working on for a little while. Um, it's going to uh, run on Mac, Linux, Windows. It's um, you know going to be generic, and essentially it's a command line interface for CFML applications. And there's tons of functionalities um, that we you know have planned to put into here, but it's basically going to allow you to you know automate and integrate a lot of things that maybe you can do right now with like the Coldbox platform utilities. You want to scaffold up applications, you want to create parts of your application, but it's all going to be um, 
via the command line. And so we're really excited about that. I'll demo a couple of pieces of that here in just a minute. But you know, we can have uh, automatic you know, tie-ins to ForgeBox. So you want to install you know, items from ForgeBox, you can do it from the command line. Um, you know, logbox integration, wirebox integration, um, you know, all sorts of uh, you know, commands that we're creating to be able to, uh, to do this. So let's see if I can use a Macintosh here. I'm a crazy Windows guy, and these Mac <laughs> shortcuts drive me nuts. So, uh, so this is a, an example of a, a command box 1.0 alpha running on uh, Luis's Mac here. Um, as usual, we have some ASCII art. Nothing is a, a, a Luis product without some ASCII art <laughs> in the readme. So, um, you know, so basic, uh, basic, uh, you know, command line. Got a version command. Uh, I also had to throw some more ASCII art. Uh, nice. How do I scroll in here? There we go. Now here's the info command. Uh, I have a bigger monitor at home. We actually get the whole thing in there, but uh, I had to. I had to put you know the ASCII art in there. So we've got a lot of integrated help um, that we're working on. You know, this going to be uh, uh, as part of the uh, the CLI. So you know, if you just type help, you can get a list of all the commands and all the namespaces. And so we've kind of nested all the commands in the namespaces. And most of these. Um, or many of these aren't implemented, but we're we're working right now on, on implementing a lot of them. And so, if you want help on the you know the cold box namespace, yeah, you know you can type help cold box, and now you've got some specific help that talks to you about what you can do with this cold box namespace. And there's further commands inside of there, and then nested uh, namespaces. So there's a cold box create namespace. Uh, also got tab complete. If I start typing uh, col tab. Puts in cold box, CRE, tab, adds in create. So we have got automatic introspection of the commands um, to uh, be able to you know, type as quickly as possible in a way that you're familiar with with Linux. So uh, look at, for instance, cold box create app. So this will create a blank cold box app from one of our application skeletons. And you've got options um, on how you can type that in. So uh, I look at cold box create app. I hit tab here. It actually shows me all the, um, the parameters you can pass in. And uh, you know, we've tried to make it fairly you know, generic and usable, so you can do kind of similar to fusion functions. You can do name parameters, so create app, you know, foo bar, right? You can do name equals. You can also just do you know, uh, positions, or you're doing you know, name equals value, um, or you can do them all positional. If you have spaces, if foo bar test is the name of the app, then you, know, you can put things in quotes. Um, it's pretty cool, and of course, if you have a, you know, a quote inside of it, you can escape them. So. Uh, Done a lot of uh, work on kind of you know how you can uh, how you can create commands and do things. So essentially, the, the CLI has a uh, a working directory. All right. So let's see here. That's my current working directory. Aha. So um, kind of I can hear myself. Sounds crazy. Uh, you know, kind of like we're used to with the regular you know command line. Um, there's essentially you know a, a directory that you're working in, and so that's kind of how a lot of the commands are based. So if you want to you know scaffold out a new site. You can see, you know, P PWD stands for, you know, print working directory. Um, you know, we support a lot of aliases, ls, the ir, you know, the same command. Of course, right now the directory is empty. So, if I want to uh, create a new cold box application, I can do, uh, oops, it's not create. Should read the help? Tell me how to do this. Cold box create app, right? And so, if you don't pass all the required parameters, it's going to ask me. Um, for all the required ones at the command line. So what's the name for my app? I'm going to call it uh, my app. I'm going to spell it wrong two or three times. Just make sure you're paying attention. All right, so we created our app here in the ITB directory. So if we go ahead and uh, do a directory listing, we can see it's created the, the application skeleton for us. And um, let's see uh, what window is as I own here in Chrome. So if we actually go in... Uh, and look at this. We can see here's the here's the sample app that we just uh, we just created based on the the advanced script template, right? And so one command, you know, the way we're going to set this up is that you can you know make batch files that you know call the the command box CLI, so you can you know script as many things as you want without having to type it in. You can actually you know save a, a shell file or a batch file to do this kind of things for you. And um, you know I'm just kind of using the default, so that's the advanced script application I believe is what it used. So if I want to um, uh, cold box create handler, and let's do uh, let's do a handler called hello. All right, now you see, um, in addition to uh, creating hello handler, it also created an integration test for me, right? Um, 
I can do it again. I can do a handler named hello, and I want an action called index, and an action, oops, comma limited list, and an action called the lease. And so now, by default, it automatically created also the views for me. So uh, uh, index view and a uh, Luis view. And of course, uh, we've got you know, the integrated help for everything. If we look at the help for this command, you can see um, name, actions, uh, view, create the views, yes or no, views directory, create the integration test, yes or no, the app mapping for the integration test, where do you want the test to go, and then where do you want the handler to go. So by default, it's going to base everything off our conventions. It put the handlers in the handlers directory, put the views in the views directory, put the integration test under test specs integration. You can override this all you know, based on what the conventions of your application might be. But the key is I just run the command in, in the web root, and it figures out, you know, what I want to do. And so if we uh, switch back over to our application, if I need to bring it, let's show up. Whoa, screen brightness. How do you use this Macintosh thing? I'm going to avoid keyboard shortcuts. They're dangerous. Um, I don't even know what that is, but I opened that up somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy stuff. What did I see? What did I, uh, I call my last one? Hello, test. Yeah. So if we, uh, we can actually you know, kind of click on our hello handler. So here's the, the view it generated. Um, you know, it's stubbed out as a basic view that says hello index. So I mean, you can use it to kind of get stuff created nice and, uh, and quickly. I can also, um, uh, let's see here. Check. I think I need to create a modules directory. So we've got our own uh, make dear command. I can create a, that directory, um, change into it. And if I want to um, actually uh, create modules, I can still run from the root. Let's create a, let's create a module real quick. Um, cold box create module. Oh, look at that. I, my autocomplete needs me to type more. Let's look at the help real quick. So, uh, name, author, author URL, version, version CF mapping, um, word, yeah, so it defaults to the model directory. So we can create a module called uh, called test, right? Automatically throws the handlers and views in there. Um, <coughs> stubs it all out. So we even go back and look at, uh, at our application now. We can see we've got a registered module here called test. And there's my kind of default view. So lots of kind of, you know, really cool tools to sort of, you know, scaffold out your applications and things, but all from the command line, and all completely, you know, scriptable and repeatable. <coughs> um, one of the things we hope to have done for the demo, but we didn't quite have it working, is um, just to uh, see, look at our base uh, help again. Um, we don't want to have a start and stop server, so we're actually going to have, you know, an embedded, uh, the ability to kind of embed a server in here and start it up directly from the command line. So change into a directory like a web root and just type start or start server and it would just spin up a server right there using that web root um, and uh, just you know test things or run tests. Um, you know, we'll be able to run test box tests automatically from here, um, automate those. Um, so I mean, we have a you know, cache box, we we'll be able to create cache box things. We're going to have artifacts which are basically um, sort of just a local repository of you know, downloaded bits from ForgeBox. So when you install things from ForgeBox, you have a local artifact cache that, uh, that those things get placed into. Um, Logbox, um, Docbox, we're going to talk about Docbox. Mm. That was still a secret. Um, uh, Wirebox, so tons of commands, and um, you can play with these. So we have the, be able to start a server up and stop it all, you know, kind of embedded from within here is pretty cool. Um, one of the other things we're um, also working on is our ForgeBox integration. Oops, ForgeBox. <coughs> so um, several of the commands um, you know, we've been working on is to be able to basically search the ForgeBox website. So I can come in and I can do, uh, I can spell it wrong, uh, ForgeBox show modules, right? And so um, we'll see if the internet's working. There we go. Get enough Wi-Fi here to connect to the REST API. So uh, I can come in here and look at the modules. Ooh, that's a lot, so check it out. Boom, pipe more. I've got to write my own more command. You can, uh, you can pipe stuff together, I can sit here and I can page through and write off on the command line. So we actually you know, view what we've got going on in ForgeBox all right in here. Um, uh, instead of modules, you can say show uh, popular plugins, right? So that'll bring back all the plugins and it'll sort them by what's most popular. The, the asterisks you see next to the name. Um, are the actual you know, rating that we have on ForgeBox for those kind of things. So if we want to install a module, I can uh, change over to my modules directory and we can do 
porch box install. What was it? Uh, a slug. Actually, well, let, let's search for it. I, wa I want to install the relax module, right? So I'll do porch box search. By the way, we do support graph, by the way, if you'd like to pipe stuff into graph. Um, search relax. Go out to REST API. There we go. There's the cold box relax module. Um, searches the, the author name, the keywords, the summary. And so the slug is cold box dash relax. So do forge box install cold box dash relax. Spelled wrong two or three times. Um, might take a couple seconds. It's going to go out. It's going to download the zip file based on the download URL. Just going to extract it locally and then it's going to install it into our directory. And this is also where the box.json is going to come into play here. So if the cold box relax package on ForgeBox has its own box.json that says install me in the abc123 directory, it's going to default to there if that's where it needs to be installed. Though, of course, you can you know, always override the installation location. And then it can also describe this other dependencies that cold box relax needs as well. So we just installed cold box relax. Whoa. I hit tab. There's all your commands. Um, so uh, let's come back over. We can even take a quick look at that. If we refresh our, our app, we've got Relax now as a registered module. And we can even click over to it. So here we go. Here's the Coldbox Relax module installed right into our Coldbox application. And all we had to do was type ForgeBox install and the slug. And there it is. So um, we're really excited. And there's going to be a lot more commands <coughs> we're going to be adding. I'm trying to think of any other cool commands I wanted to show, but I think I've got a, I'm going to show you the info again for the SPR. Um, so, <coughs> one of the, the biggest geek factors for me with command box is it's actually written in CFML. So, all these commands are actually written in CFML code, and it's going to be extensible by you guys in the future. So, if you have your own, you know, things that you want to automate at your job based on your needs, you can create your own namespace called you know, Brad, and I can have, you know, a Brad pat on the back command, and then anytime I type it, it does whatever I want it to do, it pats me on the back, right? That'd be really kind of a conceited thing to do, wouldn't it? I'll call it the Pete Fry tag pat on the back command. You deserve it more than me. Um, but it's all, it's all written in CFML, so it's all going to be extensible uh, via CFML, which I think is really cool and really exciting. And, uh, you know, we talked for a while about what technologies to use, and I know that Fusion doesn't have to be the hammer you pound every screw with. Um, but it actually, it, it's worked really well, and it's been really easy and fun to write. And we're excited to, for people to be able to, you know, come and extend this, you know, and make their own commands and add their own things to it. So, pass it back. That is command box. You guys like it? Well, I hope you like all the stuff that we're doing with Coldbox. I mean, it's impossible to show you all the stuff that we're doing, but it's pretty exciting. Uh, um, awesome that we're going to be able to have for you guys. And it's going to be available by the end of the week, um, the first offer. Okay. But um, since Brad always talks so much, uh, <laughs> let's move into Content Box a bit. And Content Box is kind of the new baby for us. Um, it'll be two years in August. It's really maturing right now. For those who you who don't know what Content Box is, it's a, a modular content platform for Confusion. It's based, of course, on Coldbox, but it's also modular. It's all a collection of modules that give you content capabilities uh, for your applications. Uh, we had already 14 releases, believe it or not, and it that has a lot of activity, so much activity that I haven't even written any docs for it, believe it or not. <laughs> but for Content Box 2, uh, obviously, we're going to upgrade to Coldbox 4. We have multilingual support already available on it uh, for the majority of the modules, but the majority is coming. Multi site. We're doing a lot with REST, so it will include RESTful APIs already. Uh, documentation, of course, slacking there. Uh, increasing the ecosystem to ForgeBox. We have a content box namespace for command box. So, with command box, you're going to be able to actually deploy content box applications. Package content box applications to do all kinds of things with content box, uh, really, really cool. And we have some mobile apps coming for content box as well. But I think I'll just give you to Joel now to talk a little bit about content box. He's the evangelist for content box. Well, thanks everyone for coming out. This is a really exciting opportunity. Um, I've been doing Cold Fusion for a while, six or seven years, but pretty new to Cold Box and content box teams. Uh, I actually started learning it at my current job, and my second week of, of on-the-job training was a, a training session with Luis on Coldbox. So I was 
just blown away by all the things that it could do and fell in love with it, started contributing, and now I find myself as the, the content box evangelist. So very excited about that. We have lots of awesome stuff coming, and I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about that today. So as Luis uh, mentioned, we have, you know, over the last two years, there's been lots of stuff that's happened with Content Box. Lots of releases, lots of new features. Uh, lots of people have started using it. Uh, quick show of hands, people using Content Box now? Oh, that's awesome. We want to convert the rest of you to this. So. <laughs> uh, but we are continually adding stuff to Content Box to make it even better uh, and more useful for you. And so I just wanted to share a couple of the new features that we've released uh, most recently. And then really I want to spend the rest of my time talking about the future and what we've dreamed up for Content Box 2.0 uh, and into the future. So one of the newest features that we have is our related content edition. Basically this allows you to create any kinds of relationships that you want uh, between your content. So if you have a blog entry and you want to make a relationship with that blog entry to you know, five pages over here, a couple content store items over there, you can definitely do that with our related content. Addition. Uh, this also comes with a widget that's built into the course, so you can plop that onto your page to show right alongside your content if you want to. But you can also uh, use this on the back end if you have some custom development, if you need to you know, somehow use those related content relationships within your application, it's, it's there for you and ready to go. So uh, adding related content is pretty simple. You just go onto any content item uh, that you want. Over on the right, you can see we have just a little simple interface, add related content. It'll show you any relationships that have already been added. Uh, and then once you click that button, it'll bring up this wizard where you can choose the content that you want to relate uh, to the content that you're already editing. And then also, not shown here, you can also see uh, any other relationships that your current content item uh, has with other pieces of content across your site. So, pretty excited about this feature. I think. It, opens up a lot of opportunities for uh, you to do some really cool stuff within your applications. The next new feature that I wanted to talk about was the menu builder. This is uh, going to be in the uh, release that we're going to be doing this week. Uh, the menu builder is, is a way for you to create any kind of custom hierarchical menu within your application. Uh, we do already have, you know, of course, the regular menu uh, options where you can you know, pull in content and display menus within your site. The menu builder is really a way for you to create those a la carte menus uh, that you might want to add to your site. So let's say you have a top menu bar that you want to add to one of your layouts. You can come in here, create your custom uh, custom menu, add any kinds of things to that that you want, pages, media items, uh, URLs, sub menus if you want to, lots of different built-in menu types uh, so that you can create any kind of custom menu that you want. We also have a core widget that allows you to easily insert this into you know, either page content, kind of instance by instance, but also um, there's an addition to the CV helpers, so if you need to add this to a layout or use it somewhere else within your code, it's very simple to do. Uh, one of the things about the menu types that we're really excited about is that we come with, in the core with these six kind of built in, so you can link to, you can create menu items from any of these types but we also have a way for you to create your own. So if you, if you decide that these six don't quite cut it for you, uh, there's a very very easy way for you to add those, uh, those custom ones, however you see fit. Just give you a sneak peek of the interface here. So we have a, a new menu designer option. So you can come in here, create your, uh, your menu, again, however you want. You can create the hierarchical relationships that you want with a really simple drag and drop interface. And then, I don't show it here, but if you click on these little edit buttons on any of these menu items, it'll expand it, and you can just go to town customizing it with custom CSS classes, uh, data attributes, and any other specific things that are required for the particular menu type. So, for example, if you have a page menu item, you'll have to choose the content item that it relates to. If you have a media item, you'll have to pick you know, the, the media item from the library and on down the line. So we're really excited about this. I think it opens up a lot of, uh, a lot of doors for really taking website design and layout to the next level because you can really create any kind of menu that you want. Uh, the only limitation is really your imagination. So look for that coming extremely soon. All right, so Content Box tomorrow. Um, 
You know, one of the things that happens when people talk about the future of something is that there's lots of promises made that never come to fruition. So you all remember um, you know, the, the fancy Marty McFly you know, self-tying shoes, right? Uh, actually, if you go back, you know, that, was, what, that took place in 1984, I think. So we're 30 years removed from that. So wow. if, you, if you go back and look at the, the future that they envisioned and all the awesome stuff that they promised, uh, a lot of it didn't come to be. So we, the shoes actually got made. So that's not a great example. But if you guys remember this one, we have the, the hydratable foods. So you can take like a dehydrated little tiny pizza, pop it in the Black & Decker hydrator, and uh, it would, you know, in two seconds, pop out a brand new pizza. Pretty amazing. Tasty indeed. It's not delivery, it's dehydrated. How about this? The, the, the resizable, self-drying clothes. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, not very practical, it turns out. But really, the one that, that really just gets everyone at the hoverboard. You know, they promised us the hoverboard. We didn't get the hoverboard. So, promises, promises, not all come to fruition. With Content Box, we don't want to do that. We we have lots of features that we're really excited about coming in the future, and we're going to deliver them. It's, uh, we're not just dreaming about things and then putting them to the side. We really want to bring these things to fruition, not just so that we can make Content Box better, but really ultimately so that we can you know, give everyone who uses Content Box just really awesome tools to help them do their jobs better, help them you know please their customers that much more, you know, just really make the community that uses uh, content box a community that's equipped with the best tools possible. So the the future that we have for content box kind of can be broken down into four main sections. Uh, you can see them here. I'm going to go through them just really quick. I don't want to belabor the points, but uh, one of the things that we're really focusing on for the future content box is bringing you know enterprise level tools. Uh, we want to position content box to be something that can have a serious place you know in the enterprise. And so whether that's content workflows. You know, documentation style layouts, you know, inner communication tools that you can use with your team uh, for managing content you know, in complex environments, and especially multi-site support. A lot of these things we feel can really have a good place within the, within the enterprise, and so these are a major focus uh, for us as we move forward with Content Box. The second main area of focus is content expansion. Uh, we want to Content Box is about managing content, so we want to give you the most robust tools that we possibly can uh, to manage your content in the most efficient and you know, feature-rich way that we can. So, you know, from con custom content types, different delivery and publishing mechanisms, uh, this idea of a planner view where you can really see from a high level all of your content within Content Box. These are ideas that are that are we're actively working on and going to be bringing in future versions of cold, uh, Content Box. And one of the things that we've had really good success with and it was really interest, interesting to see is with the Into the Box site that we did for this conference as well as the mobile app, those are both literally running off the same Content Box site. Uh, the content that we, we used in it was diverse. We used pages, we used content stores, we used custom services. But I think it proved the point that Content Box can really you know, do whatever you need it to do for your content. It can give you a website that's kind of the more traditional website. It can drive your mobile content. Uh, and it can do pretty much whatever you want. So that being said, we want to continue to develop the tools that will make your content management that much better uh, and richer. Reporting and statistics, we know that uh, you know, effectively managing content comes down ultimately uh, to be able to see and get insights into how your content is being used. I mean, you can throw tons and tons of content out there onto the web or through a mobile app, or however you're delivering it, but until you can kind of see how that content's being used, what the impact of it is, who owns it, who's working on it, uh, it's, it can be a challenge to manage that content effectively. So one of the things that we really want to focus on with the content box in the future is giving more robust reporting and statistics to you, you know, from who's using your content, who's developing it, how it's being used, where it's being used, why it's being used, you know, all the W's uh, that we learned in grade school. So again, give you the big picture of how your content is being used. So ultimately, you can make better decisions about your content. Whoops. There we go. Whoop. All right. The last one is documentation and testing. Um, we want to 
you know, as Luis mentioned, we haven't yet gotten around to the documentation because it's been growing so rapidly and so many features have been pushed out that we just haven't been able to do it. But documentation is a huge priority. We know it uh, and we're committed to, to delivering that with Content Box 2 and into the future. So we want to give you documentation not only for developers but also getting started guides for content managers so that anyone who's using Content Box can dive into it, get started really quickly and become effective in how they develop their applications uh, utilizing the documentation. And of course, testing. Uh, we want to develop and expand the testing suite that Content Box lives on top of, so that we can you know, automate the heck out of it and just make it that much more that much that much more better. There we go, English. Um, so again, we're really excited about Content Box in the future. There's lots of awesome stuff coming. Uh, if you haven't yet uh, gotten into Content Box, I would just encourage you go to go to uh, go to the website, download Content Box. It takes just a couple seconds to get started up and just play around with it, and we think you'll really like it. And uh, if you have any questions, join the Google group. We're always there answering questions, so we're, we're happy to help you out. And again, we want to thank everyone who's already using Content Box. Uh, all the participation we have in the forums, all the questions that we get, all the great uh, contributions that we get. Thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to giving you even cooler stuff in the future. Just have one more slide for you and then we can start off the day, but something was really important for me is that sometimes life is really more important than software. And to thank you guys, there's an orphanage that I, we help and 15% 15 of everything that we make here actually went there um, to help displaced kids in, in El Salvador. So if you're interested, you can look at there, especially for you know, parents here that have adopted, like uh, Kurt and stuff. Um, these things are really dear to our heart and uh, it's a really thank you to for us to, to be able to help them a little bit. So, like uh, in the wise world, uh, words of my good old friend Pitbull, que empiece la fiesta. So, let's start. Thank you for everybody, and let's start it up. Thank you.